Linggon, umano ang Commission on Elections sa pahayag ni Pangulong Duterte na palitan na ang Smartmatic. Good day and welcome to Pros and Cons, where we ask the hard questions and you decide which side of the truth you would choose to believe. The midterm elections have gone past, but as like the others, not without controversy. Smartmatic, Comelec's service provider for vote counting machines, is accused of orchestrating fraud after hundreds of counting machines encountered glitches delaying results. President Duterte himself has stepped into the issue, calling for the removal of Smartmatic in favor of a more fraud-proof system. Today, in pros and cons, we raise the question, is Smartmatic really to blame for electoral fraud? Should Comelec stop availing of Smartmatic's services? How can we prevent the bigger issue of electoral fraud? I'm Under Secretary Jobel C. Eggo, your moderator for the day. As expected, the midterm elections are accused of being marred with cheating again. And just like before, a lot of people are blaming Smartmatic for that. At this point, we should ask if Smartmatic should be taken out of the picture or not. And to answer uh, that particular question, ladies and gentlemen, uh, kasama po natin ngayon, mga kababayan, sa ating uh, programa, Unahin ko na muna dito sa aking kanan, no? ang uh, balikbayan dito sa pros and cons, si um, Director, tama po ba? James Jimenez, uh, spokesman po ng Commission on Elections. Pagandang araw, sir. Welcome back, uh, Salamat. Uh, boss. Thank you uh, for having me. Kamusta ngayon? What keeps you busy? Uh, naghahanda kami para sa registration ng mm. uh, voters. Magsimula tayo ng August 1. Mm. So, these past few weeks, uh, yun ang pinaghahanda. No? Yung elections for... Uh, yung um, barangay and SK barangay elections. And SK. Oh, sa, 19, uh, sa 2020. May move daw yata na i... i, i Oo, oh, oh, pero, pero kailangan pa rin paghandaan kasi. Uh -oh. Lalo at registration naman na pinag-usapan natin ngayon. Alright, alright. And uh, kasama din po natin ay uh, to, kilalang kilala po ninyo at uh, maraming mahanga dito sa isang magaling na abogadong kaibigan po natin. I'm talking of uh, no less than Attorney Glenn Chong. Uh, siya po ay uh, dating congressman ng Biliran. Tama po yes, ba? Oh, at uh, uh, matagal na kayong magkaibigan ni Attorney Glenn. So, kumusta na po ba, Attorney? What keeps you busy nowadays? Um, sir, uh, in the first place, Yusek, uh, I would like to thank you and uh, this uh, the Philippine News Agency yeah, welcome for to, uh, our show. <laughs> having me in your show. This is my first time, actually. <laughs> Uh, for now, I am really very busy doon sa kaso ng aking former aide, uh, si Richard Santillan, mm -hmm. who was abducted, tortured, and murdered by uh, the police officers in uh, Calabarzon mm -hmm. under General Edward Carranza. Um, napakasuhan kasi ng National Bureau of Investigation itong mm -hmm. uh, 23 uh, police officers, including si General Carranza, for obstruction of justice, double murder, and uh, planting of evidence. Mm -hmm. So doon talaga ako nakafocus because I know that Richard died for me and because of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, at least meron mang linaw. I mean, uh, how, how do you find the, the investigation? Um, You're happy with the... I am very satisfied. As a matter of fact, ako yung magpapasalamat talaga kay Pangulong Duterte because he was the one who ordered the NBI uh, oh, to investigate. And then, actually, patong-patong talaga itong mga kaso na isinampa ko sa kanila. Meron sa ombudsman. Uh, meron sa Department of Justice and uh, I will soon be filing also perjury charges mm -hmm. in Pasay uh, doon sa hearing namin kasi nagsisinungaling itong mga general na ito eh. <laughs> and uh, that is clear and, obstruction of justice. All right. Anyway, uh, that will be our uh, ano, separate topic sa mga yes. <laughs> susunod nating episode po. Okay. So, but uh, at this juncture, we'd like to go back to uh, uh, the real issue at hand. No? It's uh, about Smartmatic mm -hmm. kung... Uh, alam naman natin, si Attorney Glenn ay talagang kritik ng Smartmatic. At best friend. Ay, best friend ng Smartmatic. <laughs> at uh, sakto at uh, ako'y natukwa. Kasama po natin si uh, Director James Jimenez to explain, no? And uh, to give an assessment of uh, uh, the past, like, the sure. recent elections muna. And then, uh, we'll proceed to the uh, to answering the, the most dreaded question. Kailangan pa ba natin sila? Mm -hmm. O oh, hindi. So, thank you. Uh, when we return, we'll discuss Smartmatic and the recent elections. Pros and cons will be right back.
We're back on pros and cons, and today we're talking about issues concerning the elections last May. Mm -hmm. And of course, Smartmatic. Um, uh, laging, laging bidang Smartmatic pagdating sa election. Eh. So let's start the ball rolling. Unahin na po muna natin yung assessment ng ating dalawang panahin itong nakaraang uh, midterm elections ng Mayo. Mm -hmm. Sir, how, how would you uh, uh, characterize or describe mm -hmm. the recent elections? Well, um, maraming problema. Mm -hmm. Marami tayong nakita mga issues. Um, pero overall, na, na achieve niya yung purpose niya, no? mm -hmm. which is to elect a new batch of, of leaders for mm -hmm. the country. Um, but again, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of forensic investigations going on now, mm -hmm. um, para makita natin kung bakit nangyari yung mga problema ng experience mm -hmm. at kung ano magagawa natin moving forward para maiwasan na yun. So again, it's a mixed bag. Hindi siya 100% na masasabi mong masaya tayo sa mm -hmm. kanya. Um, dahil nga nagkaroon ng maraming problema. Alright, so yung maraming problema na sasabi natin, gano'ng karami ito? Is it enough? To... Uh, we're, talking about, hmm. uh, we're talking about problems with uh, SD cards, okay. di ba? Uh, problems with the VCMs, you're talking about, uh, again, we had a problem with the, trans with the transparency server. Hmm. So yung mga bagay na yan, while on their own, hindi naman natin sila nakikita hmm. naka-apekto sa outcome nung, nung elections, hindi na naapektuhan yung bilang, uh, still, nakapababa siya doon sa public confidence, doon sa resulta. Yan nga. So, well, before I uh, uh, turn over to uh, Attorney Glenn, so, yun yung tanong natin. Mm -hmm. Yung mga problema na yan, yun yung do, mm -hmm. sa Smartmatic, di ba? That's Actually, hindi siya Smartmatic technical. eh. Mm -hmm. Kasi wala nang Smartmatic ngayon except for mm -hmm. the electronic transmission. So, um, while we still use a machine that we bought from Smartmatic, yeah. <clears throat> ang, ang nagpatakbo nun at ang naglagay ng, ano dun, ng, ng uh, nagpatakbo ng sistema, e eh, Comelec din naman. Mm. No? So, uh, wala ng Smartmatic involvement doon. Um, ang Smartmatic involvement, at least for the main part of the elections, mm. which is the counting and, and the canvassing, mm. eh sobrang minimal na. No? Mm. Again, uh, limited sila doon sa electronic transmission. Okay, so limited meaning... So, tama yung ano na. Basically, yun lang ginawa nila. Yun na lang. Oo, oh, oh, yun so, lang. So, kailangan pa man natin, Attorney, ang Smartmatic. Obviously, Are you happy with the results of the... Uh, of course, I'm not happy with the results of the elections. <laughs> of course, I understand. Um, for us, uh, for mm. us in our <clears throat> side, uh, it's the worst elections ever. Um, actually, uh, pinadig up ko po yung uh, results uh, per precinct level. Mm. Dun sa, insofar as I'm concerned, because I was a candidate. Yeah. Marami ho talaga kaming nakita and uh, actually ito 33 provinces and cities pa lang ito. 38 provinces and cities. We noticed na tatlong successive precincts pare-pareho yung resulta ko. Mm -hmm. For example, in Talon Ono, Las Peñas City, mm -hmm. uh, you have precinct number 5, number 6, and number 7. Ang score ko 49, 49, 49. Mm -hmm. um, you can go over this list. Uh, it's all here. Uh, it's detailed. Uh, and for example, in Batangas, Tanawan City, uh, precinct number 40, 41, and 42, ang score ko po ay 44, 44, and 44. Mm -hmm. And then, I thought this was only in threes. Mm -hmm. Now, we found four precincts successive, pareho-pareho ang score. Five mm -hmm. precincts, pareho-pareho ang score. Mm -hmm. And there's one that is worse. Uh, it's in uh, Camarini Sur. Mm -hmm. uh, precinct number 11, ang score ko po 11. Precinct number 12, ang score ko po 12. <coughs> precinct number 13, ang score ko po 13. That's in Presentacion, Camarini Sur. These are statistical anomalies uh, that uh, we find hard to believe. Uh, so that's why we keep on uh, digging first. Here, for example, all in Camarini Sur, uh, precinct number 17, 18, 19, mm. 20, ang score ko po ay 4, 4, 4, 4. Precinct number 47, 48, 49, and 50, ang score ko po ay 4, 4, 4, 4. And but uh, may ganun cases na iba ba? Similar cases? Uh, I have not uh, aside heard. Aside from your case? Um, I have seen in the case of uh, Senator Inrile, uh, mm -hmm. there was a precinct there, precinct number 17 and number 18. Ang score ko po ay 57, the other side is 57, ang score ko po ni Senator Inrile is 81, the score naman sa kabila is 81. Saan yung pro pinanggalingan ng problema yan? Um, ang tingin ko po is that if, if the machines are uh, manipulated, um, it is possible na, for example, for every four votes po, for me, isa lang ang lalabas. Mm -hmm. So because the base could be different, the true base, kung let's say, for example, 100. So what, for every four votes, one lang ang every mm -hmm. report ng makina. So I get 25. Mm -hmm. But what if my score is 102? Mm -hmm. 
So it would be 25.25. So when you round it off, it would still be 25. Mm -hmm. So kaya po nagkapare-pareho ang, ang resulta ng mga presintong ito. There is a way to cheat the machines. Mm -hmm. uh, pinakita ko na po yan. Uh, I explained it. I think the Comelec, if it wants really to prove, uh, open the whole system mm -hmm. to a systematic forensic review. Uh, para makita talaga natin kung wala ba talagang dayaan. Can you do that? Or uh, are you willing to do that? Well, to open up for um, a full forensic uh, review? I think we've said it over and over again. Na open naman kami sa ganyan. Pero kailangan lang. Merong complaint. May reklamo. Kasi kung, kung bubuksan lang natin yan ng, ng ganun-ganun lang, para bang when does it end? I mean, mm -hmm. every elections, every time we use a system, we have to open it up because someone loses. Hindi naman pwedeng ganun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we've, we've always been very open to, to the possibility of a forensic review. In fact, after the 2010 elections, nagkaroon ng full forensic review yan. Mm -hmm. Because a case was filed. Mm -hmm. no? So wala namo nakita. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in, uh, we, we've uh, attended numerous mm -hmm. uh, GCOCs. No? Again, uh, yung, yung, yung nangyayari kay, ano, nangyayari kay oh, Glenn. Ito, medyo, ano yan? Oo, oh, medyo unique, kakaiba siya. Kakaiba, kakaiba, kakaiba siya, no? So, Funny yung, ano, mm. yung pinatrack nung Paano results. Paano nangyayari yun? Yung, pangal, yung number ng precinct. So, precinct 11, 11, 11 then, points. 12, then, 12, 12 yes. <laughs> and, and, and James, uh, uh, ano boss. Ano talaga yun? Uh, uh, talagang uh, magandang malaman kung bakit nagkakagano. And we have only examined uh, mm. 38 provinces and ah, cities provinces. out of There's 300. More, sure, yeah. uh, out of 300 provinces and cities, we are, we are only at 10% and we have already mm, discovered yeah. many of these anomalies, statistical mm. anomalies mm. actually. Uh, pero ang uh, sinasabi naman ni Director James is that if there is a complaint, I have already filed uh, you have. Uh, a complaint as nung nag uh, yes, nagano pa nag nag pa. Oh. Hindi mm -hmm. I, I actually sent a letter. This ano ah? Ito ito after election election to, oh, mm -hmm. sa National Board of Canvassers. Okay. Um, I already included there <clears throat> by observations the one mm -hmm. we talked yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But until mm -hmm. today wala pa pong sagot ang National Board of Canvassers to me. Uh -huh. So maybe and uh, one thing that we can do is I will ask all the other candidates mm -hmm. kasi alam ko ang iba nag study din ngayon uh -oh. kung bakit nangyari yung Baka sa kanila. Baka meron kaso. Oh, no? So I would uh, ask them na siguro we join forces together yeah. and then uh, write to the COMELEC and uh, request for a full forensic investigation mm -hmm. na open talaga. Uh, Busisiin natin and uh, we settle this issue once and for all. No. But of course, I would like to bring the issue yung sinabi po ni Presidente na dapat palitan na talaga yung Smartmatic. Mm -hmm. Malinaw po ang panawagan ng Pangulo. Mm -hmm. He said it not only once but twice. Uh, malinaw po yun. And besides, sabi naman ni Director James na wala nang, wala nang uh, participation yung Smartmatic. Then, it, tanggalin na natin yeah. so is once it and for all. The most logical next move or way forward. I think Alisin, <coughs> palitan na yung Smartmatic. I think ang issue dito kasi credibility na eh. Mm -hmm. No, um, ibang uh, pwede mong mahiwala yung usapan na may napatunayan ba o wala. Okay. At this point, parang immaterial na na wala pang napapatunayan. Mm -hmm. um, kasi nga, ma ma maingay na eh. Mm -hmm. Parang uh, kahit maglagay ka dyan ng, ng isang sistema na talagang wala nang tiwala yung tao, mm -hmm. yes, it might be the best solution to just not use them anymore. No? Mm -hmm. Ang ano lang dito, ang, ang pinaka nagpapakomplika lang dito, is that uh, wala naman tayong control kung mm. sinong sasali o hindi sa bidding. Mm. Uh, wala din tayong control kung kanino mo i-award. Yeah. Ang, ating, ang ating bidding rules, kapag uh, may sinet siyang standards, pag na-meet mo yung standard na yon, pasok ka. Mm -hmm. Again, walang discretion ng Comelec dyan. Besides Smartmatic, marami bang mga May nagbibid, pero na-underbid na, na, na nila niya. Ah, okay. diba? So yun ngayon ang, ang hinahanapan namin na solusyon. Kung gusto nating i-operationalize yung, yung gusto mangyari ng presidente, mm -hmm. kailangan tayo maghanap ng paraan para maiwasan yung sitwasyon na yun. Uh, ang importante lang, uh, hindi lang lahat iata sa COMELEC. Just tell COMELEC, huwag nyo nang gagawin yan. Mm -hmm. Kasi kami, operating under rules din kami. Mm -hmm. So kung, kung hindi na ayon sa rules yung pinapagawa sa amin, malabong mangyari. Uh, the procuring entity that is in this case the COMELEC can actually blacklist any supplier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for as long as uh, mayroong uh, legal basis to do so, yes. then the COMELEC can um, blacklist Smartmatic for good. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I have prepared long ago mm -hmm. 37 violations oh. of uh, Smartmatic mm -hmm. and uh, of course, <coughs> ang COMELEC at that time, uh, the COMELEC and Smartmatic have violated 37 mm -hmm. instances. 
But of the 37 violations of the laws and um, regulations, mm -hmm. more than half of that paulit-ulit na pong ginagawa ng Smartmatic mula pag 2010, right. 2013, 2016. Okay. Uh, ang tatanong ko susunod, uh, Tony, ano yung better alternative? Diba? But before yes, you answer that, let's take a short break muna. When we return, we'll check out what netizens have to say about today's topic. Don't go away. are still watching pros and cons let's first check out the comments about today's issue on social media alam nyo uh attorney and uh yes, ito, alam naman ni director james so eh uh meron tayong poll question lagi no sa pna website and for this particular uh subject matter ito po yung tanong natin uh, dapat na bang palitan ng comelec ang smartmatic bilang service provider sa susunod na eleksyon sa gitna ng mga aberyang naranasan at aligasyon ng pandaraya sa mga nakaraang halalan, uh, should the COMELEC replace Smartmatic with another election technology service provider amid glitches and allegations of fraud in previous elections? Yan po yung question. Ang nagsasabi po na yes, uh, dapat palitan na ay uh, 98% po at uh, 2% lang yung nagsasabi ng hindi. So I think <laughs> it's an overwhelming uh, oh, statement overwhelming ano ng mga tambayan. But first I'd, I'd like to read the uh, a couple of comments from our uh, followers. Nahin ko na itong kay Froilan Dizor. Uh, sabi ni Froilan, hindi lang Smartmatic ang palitan, kundi pati na rin doon Comelec. <laughs> Matatalino naman ang mambabatas natin para mabago ang sistema. Para yung mga nakaupo, ay talagang karapat dapat, hindi puro lang tahol sa Senado at Kongreso, yung may mga silbi naman, yun ang opinion niya. Ito naman from uh, All Filipino Patriots, ito yung kanyang uh, count name. Sabi niya, back to primitive counting, manual. Digital counting has become high-tech fraud, as proven by, uh, well, may hashtag 2019 elections. But same slow results as that of manual counting. Sabi niya, cost-wise, I doubt if there's any difference given the needed number of people versus the machines. Yun ang uh, sabi ni all Filipino patriots. Yung kanina, yun. Ano alternative? Uh, actually, sir, uh, sa mga kababayan natin, we have always proposed the hybrid election system. Hybrid. So, quickly lang, um, we propose that uh, itong ating presinto ngayon, at uh, 800 bawat uh, butante, mm -hmm. uh, bawat presinto, napaka-dami po. Uh, parang imbudo yan sa dulo, uh -oh. isang makina lang. When you say hybrid doon. po, attorney, ano It's a combination na? of uh, manual voting 
manual counting than automated transmission. Hindi, so, yung, hindi combination ng daya at saka Ay, hindi, hindi po. <laughs> oh, so, yung 800, prisi, 800 bawat uh-huh. presinto, baba natin balik sa original okay. 200 per precinct. Mm-hmm. Then, we propose that voting starts at 6 o'clock okay. in the morning. Then, tapos na po ang voting by 10 o'clock. Kasi hindi po natin isusulat. Pareho pa rin ng voto ngayon. Shading. Okay. 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Oh, oh. Kasi That's 200 lang, hours. James. James, ah, director. Kasi, to 200, kasi 200 lang ang bawat mm-hmm. presinto. Oh. Walang imbodo doon sa dulo kasi walang makina. So, but the voting, the ballot would still be the same na may, meron tayo ngayon, shading. Mm-hmm. The purpose mm-hmm. is para pagbilang ng teacher, hindi na mag-aaway ang mga watcher dito sa likod. Mm-hmm. Kasi dati, eh, tinitrain din naman ang watcher. But eh. will need more BCMs. No, we, walang makina. Walang oh. makina because this is manual counting. So, okay. kaya to facilitate faster counting, printed dapat ang pangalan, not written. Kasi pag written, sasabihin ng isa rito, si Pedro yan. Sasabihin ng kapatid, hindi, si Pablo yan. Hmm. Hindi, si Pedro yan, si Pablo yan. Maguguluhan ng teacher, set aside. Next, hmm. si Pedro, si Pablo, set aside. Doon natatagalan ang bilang. Pero pag printed ang balota, shade ka na lang, madaling basahin. So, that's why, madali din ang butuhan kasi hindi mo isusulat eh. So, four hours na lang po ang butuhan. 200 ang botante bawat presinto. By 10 o'clock ng umaga, magbibilang na po tayo ng mano-mano. Bakit, mano-mano ang bilangan. Ba- bakit sa umaga? Uh-oh. Kasi may araw. Sa, pag, sa gabi mo yan bibilangin, <laughs> mawawala, <laughs> magbabrown <laughs> out. O magbabrown out. Mawawala ang mga balota. At worse, lalabas ang mga guns at tatakutin uh-huh. ang mga nasa presinto. Pero pag may araw, wala pong balotang mawawala dahil walang brown out hindi lalabas sa mga goons dahil sa sobrang dami ng tao sa presinto. So, mabibilang po natin ng to- mano-mano ang ating boto for everybody to see kasi walang brown out talaga. So, bilangan po natin 10 o'clock ng umaga hanggang 4 o'clock ng hapon. Pagkatapos ng 4 o'clock, sir. 200,000, uh, 200, 200 people mm-hmm. per precinct. That means na yung, yung 1,000 ngayon, Ay limang divide mo by a factor of 5. Tama? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, di- that means yung 85,000, yung 85,000 number of precincts mo ngayon, you multiply that by five. Yes. Ganun karaming presinto yan. But James, that, is, that has always been the number of precincts before. <laughs> established precinct. Mm. No, in the na cluster eh. naman natin to 400. Oh, but you can oh. decluster oh. it again. So, so at present, ano ang clustering natin? Uh, up to a thousand. Up to a thousand. So, mm-hmm. lumalabas nga tayo ng 85,000 mm-hmm. precincts. Uh, yun yung unang challenge yan, logistical. Uh, you need to have 85,000 times, mm-hmm. times five times uh, five number of precincts, mm-hmm. no? So, mga 440,000 precincts. Yes, wow. 440,000 yes. precincts. Dami. But India <coughs> has more than 1 million precincts. 440,000 precincts. Kinaya. Now, you're talking about 440,000 precincts versus 120,000 teachers mm-hmm. to act as BI. Okay. Now, after so, that, so, magbilang ka dyan. That's talking, you're talking about now 120,000 people you have to watch kapag nag-record na sila ngayon nung binilang nila. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, paano natin i-record yung, yung resultang binilang para mapasok siya dun sa electronic transmission system? Kasi hybrid nga eh. So, yun, yun naman din ang hamon ngayon. There has to be a way to make sure na pag-transfer ng data from handwritten data to computer-mediated data, malinis. Kasi once That's pumasok correct. yan, wala nang bawian yan. Na, na-institutionalize mo na yung, yung resulta. Uh, if you can get past those challenges, that could work. Kung magkaroon man ng dayaan in between the two processes, yung handwritten at saka yung yun, bago ipasok do, sa... Doon sa pagpasok <coughs> ng data. Ng data. Doon talaga yun eh. Um, kasi doon sa electronic transmission, again, encrypted naman yung resulta. Mm-hmm. And then, ma-verify ma- mo naman mm-hmm. from the hand count versus the machine result. I see. Ang, ang, ang tinatanggal nila dito, yung invisible counting. Mm-hmm. na sinasabi yeah, na yung public, black box public counting. Na, uh-huh. Public counting na. Gagawin mo siyang uh-huh. public counting. But the how, existing uh, yeah, how, how, ano, how uh, uh, prevalent yung problema na yung, what's that? Invisible counting? Hindi, yan talaga yeah. yan. Yun yung VCM. Yung VCM. Oh, right. It's okay. invisible. Uh-huh. Uh, Yusek, yung, yung VCM, invisible yung counting, hindi nakikita uh-huh. okay. ng publiko. Okay, I see. The hybrid system institutionalized yung nakikita mo Open talaga counting. kung paano yes. binilang ang boto. Uh-huh. And that's what we want to promote para wala pong dayaan sa ating mm-hmm. halalan. And that's exactly the reason why Germany reverted from automated, bumalik po ang Germany to manual. Kasi oh. ang sabi po ng German <coughs> Constitutional Court, hindi na iintindihan ng tao kung paano binilang ang kanyang boto. The, the, as, an, as an essence of democracy, dapat 
naiintindihan ng tao kung paano binilang ang kanyang boto. Mm -hmm. That's why, ang Germany, bumalik po mm -hmm. sa manumanong bilangan. Dati po, automated po sila. And the Netherlands also followed suit because of the problem with yung US elections. Mm -hmm. Bumaligtad din po ang Netherlands. Uh, bumalik po sa manual counting mm -hmm. uh, from the automated to prevent their system from being uh, uh, hijacked mm -hmm. by other countries. So, that's actually a problem also we have. Uh, mm -hmm. Kahit sabihin ni Smartmatic na hindi kami mahahak but remember the Chinese are very good at hacking. The South, the North Koreans are very good at hacking. The Russians are very good at hacking. Everybody is good at hacking. Oh, so uh, we can never take chances. Do not allow our elections to be to be hijacked by foreign interests. So before we end, I'd like to ask uh, the two gentlemen here. Uh, so, ano ang gagawin natin yan to to uh, prevent future incidents like that, no fraud? Electoral fraud. Well, um, ang, ang sa amin nga, no, uh, we're, we're finding out paano natin ma-operationalize mm. yung directive nung, nung presidente. Pro, I'm, going, I'm going to go back to, to the commission yeah. mm -hmm. and refresh them doon sa mga pinadala na ni, ni Attorney Glenn Chong. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good starting point for any, you know, for, yeah. for any future action. Ang importante kasi sa COMELEC may sinusunod tayong proseso. Um, beyond that, I think... Uh, Sa ngayon, nag-focus muna kami sa registration at sa barangay. Yes. So, yung 2022 is still a way off. Um, but certainly, hindi yan nawawala sa pag-iisip ng COMELEC ngayon. Quick reaction, uh, attorney. Um, I'm sure na if magpatulog-tulogan lang tayong taong bayan, the next time we wake up, it's Smartmatic again in 2022. <laughs> I'm very sure uh. of that. Uh, especially because ito, prediction ko to ha. Mm. Uh, especially yung mga makina ng Smartmatic, they, they are no longer usable by 2022. Wow. Hindi na magagamit yan. Wow. So, ang malamang, mag a na naman at si Smartmatic naman ang bigbigyan ng kontrata. <laughs> now, that's why uh, the public has to be vigilant. We have wow. to raise our voice at the moment we smell uh, anyone like this uh, na gagawin ng COMELEC. But again, I, I call on the Commission on Elections. The President has spoken. We have so much respect for this President. Um, so ngayon, the ball is in the court of the COMELEC. What will you do? Are you gonna um, susuwain nyo ba ang ating mahal na Pangulo? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Tapos talaga ang ating oras, but uh, that's the beauty of it. no? So tuloy-tuloy, matrigger yung isip na ating mga kababayan. So it's straight from the shoulder and right on the money. But before we go, we'd like to get, uh, of course, our uh, closing statements from our guests. Unahin na natin si uh, Director James. Um, paalala ko lang sa mga kababayan natin, magsisimula na ang ating voter registration sa August 1 at uh, tatakbo yan hanggang end of September. Huwag niyo sasayangin yung uh, pagkakataon maging bahagi ng kasaysayan. Huwag din natin kakalimutan yung panawagan ni Attorney Glenn Chong. Kailangan maging mapagmatsyag tayo uh, sa mga development sa ating halalan para maging bahagi tayo ng ganung conversation na yan. Alright, very well said. Thank you. Attorney Glenn? Your message for um, ating mga kababayan. Ang gusto ko lang pong ipaabot sa ating mga kababayan, mahalaga po talaga na ang ating halalan na naging malinis at tapat para po makapaghalal po tayo ng mga tapat na lingkod bayan. Our progress as a country starts from our elections. Kapag tama po ang ating pagpili, uh, mabibiyayaan po tayong lahat. So, for 2022, we have to we have to be very vigilant. Bantayan po natin. Wala po tayong ibang bantayan kundi si Comelec. At si Smartmatic. <laughs> okay. Thank you, <clears throat> Director James Jimenez yes, of, Co of uh, Comelec and Attorney Glenn Chong. James. <laughs> Idol. <laughs> we appreciate your uh, being here on the show. Don't forget to tune in next week for another topic of interest. For your comments, suggestions, and questions, visit our Facebook page and the PNA website. You may be for or against. You may agree or disagree. In the end, we're all Filipinos working towards the same goals. Will you choose what's right? Or will you stay on your side of the truth? Once again, this is Philippine News Agency Supervising Undersecretary Joel C. Egbo. Thank you and see you on the next episode of Pros and Cons.